I believe it's time to have church. Amen. Good. Let's have church. Welcome to the friendliest church in Albuquerque. This is loud. I have to turn me down. I don't know where my controller is. It's over here. Welcome to the friendliest church in Albuquerque. It is good to be in the house of God on a beautiful Sunday morning. You know, yesterday winter snuck in. But today it feels nice. It's like a, a fall day again. It's, uh, I mean, it's sunny and uh, you, you did... Well, but it didn't feel like that in the car. In the sun, you know, in the sun in Albuquerque, it's great. And maybe it's just the joy, because when I came in, the church was already warm, thanks, Deuce. <laughs> the lights were already on, and the Spirit of God is already here. Let's stand this morning and go before him. Lift our hearts and hands toward heaven. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, O oh God, for your faithfulness, how you watched over us this week, O oh Lord, how you blessed us, Lord, how you kept us, God, and Lord, those who didn't make it, Father, those who are suffering through the uh, uh, tornadoes and things, God, Lord, their lives are in your hands, Father, we just thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. Thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Lord, work with the survivors, oh God. Help them, Lord, with their uh, rebuilding, Lord, of their area, Father. Lord, we just praise you for all all your mercies, oh God. Praise you for your goodness. Come on, worship him this morning. He's here. He's here. Let him hear your praise. We love you, God. Hallelujah. You're faithful. Your word is true. Have your way, oh God, and we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Let's sing Silent Night. Amen. Hallelujah. Silent night, holy night, all, all is calm, all is bright, round the young virgin, my sound good. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven. Solid night, silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy. With the 
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Verse 4. Silent night, holy night, wondrous star, lend thy light with the angels. Let Sing verse one one more time. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round young virgin, mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. It's so good to sing Christmas carols and worship him. It's such a sweet time of the year, sweet time. Hallelujah. Now we can sing about joy to the world. Hallelujah. Well, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven nature sing joy to the world the savior reigns let men their songs employ while fields and floods rocks hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sound no more no more the sin and sorrows grow nor thorns infest the ground he comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found far as the curse is found far as far He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders and wonders and wonders of and wonder wonders and wonders of his love. You guys sound good. Amen. I think Sister Tensio with the tambourine gave y'all the... No, it must have been me leading good, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and be. Sing, all ye sinners, 
voices of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us. Hallelujah. Oh, come, let us adore Him. God we serve and what a pleasure it is to worship him sing glory to his holy name he alone is worthy Lord we praise you oh God Lord we thank you for your faithfulness God and just thank you for your loving kindness father oh Jesus have your way this morning hallelujah Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give him a clap offering. He's worthy.
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Come on, Amy. May his, may his favor be upon you in a thousand with that. I need the Lord's favor upon my life. I need the favor of God upon my family, upon my children. I need his favor in my coming and my going. When I go to work, I need God with me. Come on now. When I lay my head at rest, I need to know he's there watching over me. When I wake in the morning, I want to hear him. I want to feel his presence. I want to feel his might, his mercy upon my life. I want to know that he's watching over my children. I might not be able to see him, but our Father in heaven, he sees them. That's the God that we serve. And this is the blessing that we're praying over each and every one of us. Amen, oh Lord. Your will be accomplished over us. Lord, be it so. Let it be done unto me. Let your mercy, let your love be poured out. Come on, you know someone who needs a blessing. You yourself. You yourself came here hungry this morning. You yourself came here longing just to feel a touch. You came in this morning saying, God, I don't want to leave the same. I want to know that you're real. I want to meet with you today. I don't want it to just be another Sunday morning service. I don't want to just come and say amen on cue, but I want to worship you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you as my personal Lord and Savior. May your favor. May your favor. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, oh God. Yes, God. And you're coming. Yes, and you're going. Yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Come on, he's for you this morning. He loves you this morning. Don't you come and just give him your heart. Say, God.
Father, so grateful, so grateful for your grace and mercy. So grateful for all the souls that you brought in your house this morning. May your favor be upon each of us, God. Lord, and we leave, let us know that it was good for us to be in this place. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, give you the glory and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You may be seated. It really is good to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, yes. I moved my stuff around. Amen. Welcome to the friendliest church in Albuquerque. And you guys sang in a good little crowd, but no, I'm, I'm knowing there's got to be more coming. Come on, y'all believe it? Yes. Me and Sister Hicks are going to sing a song, maybe. Maybe we can sing some more souls. And I saw a car turn around the corner. I keep my eyes out. So our greeters can be out there to say, hey, welcome to the friendliest church in Albuquerque. Yes. Whose birthday is it over here? What? Who? Raise your hand so we'll know. We're, we're <clears throat> this is what I had heard. I don't know. It's like a little birdie told me. There's going to be a cake after church. Only for her friends, though. See, that's how we're all friends. Amen. We can all have cake. And I, I believe there's going to be one slice of pizza, just one slice of pizza for everybody. And, and seeing as how they had cake, I said I was going to get some ice cream. Okay? So we're going to have ice cream, cake, and pizza. That's a good birthday party, right? Amen. Amen. Make sure we sing happy birthday to you, all right? How old are you? Hello? Nine. She was running out of fingers. She said, wait. <laughs> this, this many. All right. Wait, tell, I'll tell you how old I am. <laughs> amen, amen. Hi, family. Welcome, welcome. Amen. See, I we didn't even get to sing. We got another family in. Amen. Come on now. God knows. Hey, Christmas Eve. It's a Friday at 6 o'clock. Be in the place. We're going to have a candlelight service. We're going to sing some Christmas carols. We're going to worship our Lord. We're going to have some testimony. And we're going to have candles to take back home with you. Now listen. We're going to have live fire in the house of God. No wax on the new chairs. Okay? Mommies. Your kids are going to get little flashlights, little clicky lights, because we're not having it. No, t no wax on the chairs. But come and be a part. It's, the lights are going to be down low. It's going to be nice. It's going to be awesome. He's already excited. Amen. <laughs> come on, let's have a good time. And I'm telling you, invite your friends. They may not come to any other service, but this will be a sweet time to introduce them to the house of God. And they might meet somebody and say, man, they didn't even bite me. I thought when they came to church, people would bite you or something. I thought they would try to brainwash me, but they were really nice. We're nice people, right, Chris? Yes, we, are. we are nice. Yes, we, are. we work on being nice. God saved us. Amen. So invite your friends, invite your neighbors, and tell them, come to, come to the friendliest church in Albuquerque, and let's worship our Lord and Savior. Let's really celebrate Christmas. Amen. What, what the real meaning of Christmas? It, it is good to get gifts under the tree, all right? My tree is about this tall. But it's not necessarily about the gifts. It's a real season of awakening. Anybody experiencing that? I mean, look, there's a lot of suffering going on in our world. There's a lot of sickness. There's a lot of death. She lost her mom and her dad. Come on. But in the midst of this, 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 this new Christmas is a time of new life. It's a time when Christ came to deliver us from the bondage of sin. He came, and, and his birth signified deliverance if you accept him as your Lord and Savior. 
So when we worship, let's worship with that knowledge. Let it not just be about the Yuletide season, not just about what everybody else is doing, not just about the gifts under the trees, but about the mercy that God poured out for us in sending us his only begotten son. Come and be a part, amen? amen. This time we're going to wait upon you to receive your Sunday morning tithe and offerings. You give as giving unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you. And we're having communion after church. JP, I know you're looking prestigious over there. Come, come help us receive this morning. He's got a bag up here. Jesse and, and David are out sick. Jesse has a, a cough, and he didn't want to share, and everybody said amen, right? <laughs> Keep your cough at home. But we are here. I'm not going to make you pray, J Jesse. Um, I know your name, JP. Jean-Pierre. Reverend Atticia, would you pray for the offering this morning? Amen. Thank you. softly clap but I know y'all know this song give God the glory we want to say thank you for your giving may God bless you according to your giving amen Stop you. 
have this morning. Come on and sing. You need to give God. The blood of Jesus is against you. Yes. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Hallelujah. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Come on. So let us give God. So let us give God. So let us. All of the praise. Everybody say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You're not welcome here no more. Satan, the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. is against you. Say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. So let us give God. So let us give. So let us give God all of the praise. Everybody, give, give God, God yes. the glory. You need to give God. Give God you need to give him the glory. The victory. Hallelujah. Woo! That was a workout for me. Give God the glory. Amen. None of the praise goes to us. It goes all to him. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Woo! All right. I'm done, Reverend Tessie. You can turn that back to simmer. I know it's on full-blown cook right now. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Look. You guys missed it, but we're having a candlelight service New, uh, Christmas Eve. You already know? You don't know. Well, now you know. 6 o'clock, Friday. Be there or be square. Tell Gustavo. Because he came a couple years ago, and it would be good to see him again. Tell him I said it, all right? You got me? Um, see, Pastor Hicks asked for you special. Amen. All right, kids, Sunday school class, make your way. All right. Woo. And they're off and running. Put a little pep in their step, too. The youngest one is like, hold up now. Amen. I hope all of y'all came to church with that same attitude. I got to get there. I gotta get there. Amen. My Bible reading is found in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7, I'm beginning to read it, verse 10. You know the name of our church is New Testament Christian Church. And this man uh, addressed me one time and he said, so what do you guys don't believe in the Old Testament? I said, dude, it's the name of the church. It's not a belief. We believe in the Bible. Come on now. <laughs> but some people want to tell you apart, you know. So you know people like that are want to get in an argument. I just want to lift up Jesus, amen. I, I don't have any arguments this morning. So we're in the Old Testament at New Testament Christian Church, all right? All right, here we go. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in depth or in height above. But Ahaz says, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? 
Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. My text this morning, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This morning, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message entitled, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Isn't it awesome when God just shows you something? It makes it clear to you that he's talking directly to you. Amen. Sister Jamie, stand and pray for the message this morning. Say, I wasn't prepared. Instant in season and out season, right? Come on. Amen and amen. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. And like I said, there's no sweeter thing when you know that you know. Even if you don't know how you know, it just feels good to know. But sometimes people say the right things. They say amen because Pastor Hicks says say amen. Amen, amen. Praise God, amen, amen, amen. What are we talking about? I don't know, Amen. Did you hear what he said? I don't know. Amen. 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 What's going on in church? I don't know. Just say amen. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Shh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he's got on. All right. <laughs> but secret disaffection to God is often disguised in a color of respect for him. Oh, pray, oh, praise the Lord. But they don't really mean it. They don't genuinely respect him. They don't, they don't expect God to do the things that he's promised. I believe God in everything he says. He said he's coming back. Anybody believe it? He's coming back, but are you ready? He's coming back, but have you prepared yourself? See, when you really believe stuff, you act accordingly. Ahaz said uh, they, he was a hateful king, one of the worst kings for the nation, and, and God had been merciful to him, and, and still he pushed aside God. He trusted man rather than God. And all of us would look and say, oh, that's disgusting. But we do the exact same thing. We say, oh man, God, I need this, I need that. Oh, I, I better get on the phone and start calling every charitable organization I can find. I, I may need to call my mom. I may need to call my dad. I, I, maybe I get a loan from my boss. Or, or, and, and we start doing all these things. And, and I'm not finding fault because sometimes you do have to put legs on your prayers. But when you come to God, can I get a witness? When you come to God and God says, I've got you, you need to count that thing as done and stand on God's word. Come on, Maria, you know something about that, right? Standing on the promises of God. That means that I don't need a backup. He is my backup. I don't need another way because he is the only way. And this is who I'm putting my faith in. The prophet reproved Ahaz and his court for the little value they had in the divine revelation that God was giving them. You know, some people just won't receive what God has. God has so much. And if you don't want yours, I'll take it. Did you hear what I said? I'll take yours. God has more than enough. You know, it, 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 when he feels it, he says, press down, shaken together. And running over. That's the kind of blessings I want. You guys not looking like y'all want that kind of blessing. 
Miss Kathleen, you want to? I know Chris wants hers. Miss Kathleen, want, Maria wants hers. All right, all right. I don't know if you guys want, I want mine. I came for mine this morning. And when we put little value in it, nothing is more grievous to God than distrust. Even if you smile and say, oh, no, I believe. Oh, no, no, I'm here. See, I came to church. I'm here, God. But God wants more than just your presence. He wants your, your faith to be in him. See, we have faith in things that we can see. He said, blessed are they that believe that have seen. But what about those who haven't seen and yet they still believe? We haven't seen him, but I believe. I haven't seen his face, but I know he's real. I haven't felt his hand, but he's touched me in so many ways. Can I get a witness? So when you think about it, how great a distress and danger it is for us to be uh, reluctant to receive from our Messiah what he has for us. To be reluctant to receive from our salvation. Because there is no salvation in any other name. You, can't, you can call on Buddha, but what's he going to do for you? Well, I believe in karma. Well, I don't know what karma is. I know they got a commercial. <laughs> but I believe in Jesus. Somebody say, oh, pastor. I've been praying for you because a witch doctor put a hex on you. He said, uh, remember when the serpent bit the man of God's hand? What did Paul do? <laughs> oh, no, he bit me. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I'm getting ready to die. Did he do that? He said, and went on about his business. And everybody was like, he give a die now in a few minutes. They just kept watching. Then they said, he's not even swelling up. What's going on? Then, what not? I saw it. It was a viper. It bit him. I said, Whatever the enemy does, it can't outdo what God has done. If God calls you blessed, guess what you are? You're blessed. Now, the world might say they want to curse you, but I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. You've been cursed. I've been blessed. And I am blessed. And no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Come on now. God told them, it shall be brought to pass just like God said it would. When God tells you something, you can count it as done. Now, he doesn't always tell us when. Can I get a witness? And he doesn't always tell us how, because we'd be sitting there like, God, you said it's going to happen. I believe you, but uh, when? When is it going to happen? Y'all act like I'm the only one be biting my nails. <laughs> Y'all act like I'm the only one be like, oh, any time now. Come on now. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need the check to be, the, the check is in the bank, right? The money's going to be there, right? You guys don't, y'all act like y'all. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that we was here for a long time. We've been here and I didn't have a job. Seven months. And the man of God came to town. My brother-in-law, he came to town. And I was like, man. He said, uh, Brother Hicks, uh, me and my wife want to take you out to lunch. I don't have any money. They're visiting me, so I'm like, if, if they, I'm going to take him out to lunch. How am I take him out to lunch? I don't have, I can't even pay my rent. God said, take your checkbook. I'm going to take my checkbook for I ain't got no money in the bank. <laughs> take your checkbook. Okay. If God tell you to take your checkbook, what you going to do? I'm taking my checkbook. I took my checkbook. And I'm riding, I'm driving across town. Now, I was living on this side, and they were out there by the mountains uh, staying at an uh, RV park. And I'm driving, and the phone rings. It's my wife. She's in Baltimore. She said, my sister. My sister said she wanted to be a blessing. She put $2,000 in the bank. 
She said, just do what you need to do. Take care of uh, the man of God while he's in town and pay the rent. See, if I had left my checkbook home, we'd still be in trouble. <laughs> but when God tells you it's done, it's done, right? Matthew 1, 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which by being interpreted is God with us. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, and he would be Emmanuel, literally God with us. God walking amongst us. We read it last week, how that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Aren't you glad that God sent his son for you and I? So we got to go back to see what's going on in this story. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 2, it was told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved out of, in the heart of the people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, go forth to meet Ahaz, thou and Sherejishabuk, thy son, at the end of the conduit, the upper pool and the highway of the fuller's field. And say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger arisen in Syria, the son of Rehemiah, because of Syria, Ephraim and the son of Rehemiah have taken evil counsel against thee, and said, let us go up against Judah and vex it. Let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiel. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is rising. Within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramallah's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. The armies had decided to join forces against God's children. Now, like I told you, their king was a rebellious king. He wasn't doing God's bidding. But God still watched over his children. This is why we have to be careful. People say, well, that's not my president. I didn't vote for him. He's still God appointed. Can I? Is that right? Did you read that in the Bible? Pray for your leaders? Well, I don't want to pray for him. I'm a Republican. He's a Democrat. I'm a Democrat and he's a Republican. I can't do it. What the word of God say? I, I want to do what God wants. Only me and Chris want to do what God wants. <laughs> I want to do what God wants. And it might not go with what I want. But what God wants is going to work for us. Ungodly men are often punished by others just as bad as themselves. I remember Reverend Curry, he had come through Baltimore, and he was preaching a message. And I was sitting there, I was excited, because it, it was just it's some energy that comes when a, a preacher comes to town and he's on fire. He's up here shouting and screaming, and I'm sitting out there like, yeah, I'm just soaking it up. Everything he said, he said, man, you know, the devil, the devil, he's got some big, big, bad demons out there trying to, destroy you, trying to annihilate you, trying to stop you in your track. He said, guys, bigger than Brother Hicks. I'm like, bigger than me? So I'm like, man, he got my attention there. He said, but God. But God's got men bigger than that. You think about that. 
He said, for every big bad man, there's a big bad man catcher out there. I said, oh, hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what the enemy has. God has something greater. Doesn't matter the weapons that he's formed against you. God's weapons are greater. So God, he's going to do this. Being in great distress and confusion, the Jews gave everything up for loss. They began to count themselves as just the victim. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, we all do the same thing. The devil's done got me. I've been strung out on drugs all my life. This is going to be my lot in life. I'm going to die addicted. I'm never going to have a family. I'm never going to have peace. I'm never going to have joy. I'm never going to experience the happiness that everybody else seems to have. If you listen to his lies, that might be your lot in life. But why not listen to Jesus? He said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. God loves you. He wants to bless you. They made God their enemy and knew not how to make him their friend again. Do you feel that way sometimes in your life? I know some people that say, that's it, Pastor. You don't understand. I've been through so much. My marriage is falling apart. My children, everything is just in an uproar, and I just feel like giving up. I can't give up. God's brought me too far, and he's been too good to me. I can't give up because he's loved me. I can't give up because he he sent money when I didn't have any. I can't give up because he sent help when I was longing, when I was hurting. I can't give up because he's always been there. And I know he's not going to quit right now. Ahaz in fear, he called for two powerful princes. He called for the other nations to join him. And I'm telling you, sometimes we, we think that we can call the enemy to come help us. We think we can, I'm telling you, we say, Mommy, I need some help. And Mommy, she loves you. She tries to do everything. She, here, baby. I need $10,000. Here, baby. Here's, here's $200. I was going to buy some food, but you just take it. Mom, $200 is not going to do anything, but you take it, right? <laughs> You tap Mommy dry. You, you call everybody. You, you start putting your little pile together, and it fails by comparison to what you really truly need. And we do that in our spiritual life. We need salvation. But we take a little good feeling in church. Oh, man, I had a good time. I clapped my hands. Oh, that felt good. But we haven't fully surrendered. And so we leave not really satisfied. We leave with our needs not being met. That's not what God wants for us. Two kingdoms of Syria and Israel were nearly expiring. And while God has worked for the firebrands of the earth, God has worked for things that, that seemingly are trying to tear your life apart, but God is using them for our good. Don't you know he's working all things together for our good? He's working. Man, man purposes, uh, they, they want to see us fall. They want to see us give up. They want to see us destroyed. But God is working all things together for our good. And, and what really is hurting us, God had you put you through in order to get you to where you trust him. In Isaiah chapter 7 through 8, he predicted the breakup of Israel's alliance with Aram. Because of this alliance, Israel will be destroyed. As Israel, Azria, would be the instrument God would use to destroy them and to punish Judah. But God would not let Assyria destroy Judah. They would be spared because of God's gracious plan that cannot be destroyed. See, God lets us go through some stuff. Some stuff that we say, man, I don't know how I made it. 
sister's been fighting cancer. She's been fighting with her, her lungs. She's been fighting with all kinds of things attacking her body. But she's still here. How's that? Because of God. And his, we're not going anywhere until God says so. Did you hear what I said? Until God says so. No, the enemy, he's got me. I know he's going to take. He don't have nothing. Only what you give him. I'd rather give God the glory. <laughs> Ahaz was one of Judah's worst kings. He refused God help. Instead, he tried to buy help. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when you try, when people, people saw these things like, uh, I'm going to call Dionne Warwick's uh, hotline. You got money to call Dionne Warwick. Why don't you pay the bill? <laughs> you want to trust in horoscopes? You want to you read the zodiac signs? Well, what, what's the stars say? I don't know. I don't read the stars. I read the word of God. What did God say? I'm telling you, the stuff that we're going through, I got it right here. Romans 8 and 28. We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You say, Pastor, it don't feel good, but God's working something out in your life. Pastor, I don't like it, but God wants you to have a full break. Anybody need to be broke free for real? I mean, delivered from whatever it is that I'm, God is able to do it. Because he's going to give you a sign himself. Moreover, the Lord spake again to Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord. Ask it whether in depth or in height above. But Ahaz says, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tempt God. That was a good answer, right? That's a good answer for each of us, but it has to come from a good heart. Don't just say that's right. Don't just agree when you know what you're supposed to do, but you're not willing to do it. You're not willing to humble yourself. You're not willing to say, God, I really need some help. See, God really confronted him. He promised a sign, and Ahaz said, no, sir, I don't need a sign. I just, you know, I believe it. And, and God sees when we put on our airs. He sees when we're putting on a show, when we're, 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 you know, praise the Lord in church. Oh, praise him. And we leave out, we got a different face. <laughs> praise the Lord. I can't stand this pastor. He's been here so long. You know, and people do that. And they think they can do that with God and get away with it. But God knows the intents, the thoughts of your heart, the declaration of God's good pleasure. He literally wants to show us how good he is to us. He offers that to true believers rather than those that are just hypocrites who are looking to find fault. There's a lot of people that come to church and say, I want to see how he's going to mess this up today. What key are you going to sing in a day, Brother Hicks? Key of H? You're such a musician, I know I I sing to the Lord, okay? And the, and the angels say, Lord, bless him. <laughs> Lord, just bless him. <laughs> what key was that? I don't know. Just praise, bless him. Just bless him. <laughs> but God knows my heart, amen? amen. God knows my heart. The, the, he literally is trying to get us to understand that we've got to come to God and be real. God said, ask it either in depth or height. Demand something that be wrought either in the earth or in the heavens. You know God is able to bring it to pass in your life if you're willing to ask of him and put him to the test. I remember my pastor, he said, did God call you to preach? I got to start doing that. I got to start walking with the people being a pastor. He said, <clears throat> Junior, did God call you to preach? Because I remember my heart said, Poof. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, sir. 
I said, well, did you ask him? No. I said, why don't you ask God? I said, okay. So I was in there, and I'm reading my Bible, and he said, you know, I could ask him, and I'm, and I'm reading. I said, okay. And so I asked him, and then I said, well, how am I know? So I said, look, Lord, if you wake me up tonight with a message, I'll get up, I'll write it down. And I'll know you called me to preach. And I went to sleep. Slept good, had a good Bible reading. All of a sudden, 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and all I heard was, and it wasn't a voice saying, I must decrease, he must increase. That's not what I heard. But I heard it, an impression in my heart that said that. I knew that was in John. I said, all right. Woo! God called me to preach. And I went back to sleep. That's what I'm saying. Didn't you say he was going to write it down? I said, oh, I can't write that down. That was real. God is real. He said, ask a sign. When was the last time you put God to the test? When was the last time you trusted God to show you how real he is? I mean with sincerity of your heart. I'm not just talking about what Pastor Hicks said. I'm talking about your own personal experience. We all have personal testimonies. Can I get a witness? How God showed up and you don't know how. How God showed out, and you don't know how, how God provided when you didn't even know that you needed it, but he took care of it. But when was the last time you put him to the test? You held him to task by faith. Now, I'm not saying you can manipulate God. All right, see, there's a lot of people who do this. Genie in the bottle. Come on, genie. Make me a millionaire. Make me a millionaire. That's not God. And if you were a millionaire, you'd destroy yourself. I know I would, driving my new Lexus. God knows. He said, but don't tempt the Lord. Don't tempt the Lord. In Matthew chapter 16, he said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left and departed. He left them. I'm not talking about wickedly coming to God, but I'm talking about earnestly coming to God and say, God, I need an answer. When you come to God with that kind of hunger, he will absolutely give you what you have need of. Isaiah went on and he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for ye to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. And you know the story how that Jesus would eventually come. But that wasn't the sign that this king was looking for. This, sign, this king needed a victory. Don't you know God is able to give you the victory if you're only willing to believe him? That sign was not just for him, but for us also. Brothers and sisters, my testimonies, they're not made up. They're not false. I'm not telling you some fables. I'm telling you what really happened. Because that night in church, when Reverend Jones was here preaching at Revival, he was talking about how that he found himself in a bind. He said he really wasn't hurting for cash. But he got a phone call from a brother that said, keep your eyes in the mail. He said, and just like that, I got a check. And he didn't disclose the amount. 
And he was closing up the message, and I was like sitting off to the side over there, getting ready to come up to speak, and tears start running down my face. And he's looking at me like, now this is my brother-in-law, my wife's older brother. He's like, why is Gus over there crying? <laughs> and when he gave me the mic, I just began to pour out how that God had blessed me that morning with a check to pay my rent, to be able to take the man of God out to lunch, to meet the needs that me and my family had need of. And I didn't even know how to ask for it, but God met the needs. Here God has given us a promise and he says, I'm going to show you a sign and this sign is going to let you know that I am going to do what I said I'm going to do. Did Jesus come or not? He came. God literally dwelt among us. He walked among us and he showed us the true way to worship. He said we must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. God didn't want just lip service. God didn't want, he said, oh, hear, house of David. Not only Ahaz, but his family, his court, me and you, we need to hear what the word of God has to say. God has a promise for you. He has a promise for me, and I want mine. I want to be able to know I can trust him. He said, is it a small thing for you to weary men? Is it a small thing for you to go and ask a man for help when, when really you need to go and ask God? Because a man can't help you. I remember my little sister when we were growing up, she said, when I grow up, I'm going to get married and have a husband, and he's going to give me everything I want. The end. I was like, what? That's what I want. Get married, get a husband, and get everything I want. You don't want a job? Nope. <laughs> and that's really, that's all she wanted. Like, Girl, there's so much more. God wants to give us so much more. But we settle for this stuff. We settle for this garbage that the devil gives us. The devil gives us scraps off the table when God has prepared a feast. The devil gives us leftovers when God wants you to have. He said, I want you to be a lender, not a borrower. Anybody feel like that? Do you feel like you're more than a conqueror or do you feel like you're the conquered? Because God wants us to live that kind of life. He wants us to be robust. He wants us to be the people to look and say, man, I want to be a Christian. I want to be like, I want to be able to blossom. I want to be able to be prosperous. I want to I know how to go through a battle and not give up. Because everybody's going to go through a battle. Come on now. Rich people. Rich people go through battles. The tax man's back there. <laughs> they go through battles. He said, but will you weary God? Won't you come to God? I want to go to God. I want to come to God and say, God, help me. God, I'm broken. God, the enemy is all around me, and I feel like I'm getting ready to lose. But I know I can't lose because I'm on your side. When you come like that, God is like, Tch. remember Jesus? The man said, look, my servant is sick, but I don't even want you to come in my house. Just, just say the word. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples and said, I haven't seen faith like this. No, not here in Jerusalem. Go thy way. Your faith has healed you. Do you have that kind of faith in God? That he could just say the word and you believe it. Did you just trust him at his word? He gave us a sign. 
a sign that we could really look to and, and realize God is a God that keeps his promises. He'll never fail us. The Messiah shall introduce a glorious, a glorious gospel, the, the kingdom of heaven. He began to preach about the kingdom of heaven, and the world was turned upside down from that point on. And, and brothers and sisters, we're still lifting up the good news of Jesus Christ and his salvation. And brothers and sisters, that promise is still going forth. And have you received it? And Matthew he wrote, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Isaiah prophesied about it. Matthew wrote about it. And then it happened. God keeps his promises. The name Jesus means Lord saves. Jesus came to earth to save us because we can't save ourselves from our sins and its consequences. The wages of sin is what? Death. The wages of sin is death. That is mean separation from God. We are eternity bound. Did you know that? When we close our eyes in this life, we still have to live in eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity? Amen. I want to spend eternity in heaven. I made my reservation. But if you're not ready, you're going to open your eyes like that man did and find yourself in hell. And he said, man, I, I see you over there, Father Abraham. Send Lazarus. And just put a drop of water on my tongue. Because I can't bear this torment any longer. If we're not ready, if we don't believe God, that's where we're going to spend eternity. The Lord said, verse 17 of Isaiah, The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. See, after the comfortable promise that he'd made to Ahaz as the breach of the house of David, the branch of the house of David, rather, he followed terrible threatenings against him as a degenerate branch of the house. He knew that Ahaz was a horrible king, and you know God knows the wicked, and he's going to deal with them accordingly. But God can use them to accomplish his will. Now, I want to be used of God, but I want to be a vessel of honor. He said, there are many vessels, some to honor and some to dishonor. I want to be a vessel unto honor. I want to be usable for God. And through a loving kindness of God, that nation was not utterly destroyed or taken away. For he had made a covenant with David, and God kept his promise. Let those that will not mix faith with their promises of God expect to hear the alarms of their threatenings. Did you hear what I said? Those of you who don't take heed to the warning of God realize it's going to happen. Just like he said he was going to send his son, he did. Just like he said there's a wrath to come, it's coming. Nehemiah wrote, Now therefore, I love this. Now therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keep his covenants and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee, 
that have come upon us, on our kings, on our princes, and on our priests, and on our prophets, and on our fathers, and all thy people since the time of the king of Assyria unto this day. God will watch over us. Come on, Sister Martinez. See, there are many prayers. There are many speeches in the Bible, including a long summary of Israel's history. Because individuals did not have their own copies of the Bible, they would, like, you know, today we all, we have the Word of God. We have it in our phones. We have it on tablets. We have it on paper. We, we have it everywhere available. But they didn't have a copy, so they would share the stories over and over again. The victories, how God delivered them, how he bought them out of Egypt. How he put those plagues upon that nation and how they literally ended up spoiling the land of Egypt, that rich nation that held them in captivity for all those years. Remember your personal history. Because it can help me, certainly help you to remember what God is capable of doing when you trust him. When Reverend Jones finished preaching that revival, I had a full confidence. I was a new preacher. I was here in Albuquerque. I didn't have a job for seven months. I was like, man, I done made a mess. I done, I done left my security. I done left my job back there on the, West Co uh, on the East Coast. I, I done left everything that I've known to come here with people that are this tall. <laughs> I can't get a bacon, egg, and cheese on toast. Everything has to be a burrito. But I love the burritos. I didn't know about green or red. or I now I know all of that. And I could have missed out on so much because I could have gave up. I kept looking at the situation and it was looking grim. But I remembered I called Reverend Jones before I came to Bible school. I said, Reverend Jones, I'm scared. I don't know what I ought to do. Tell me what to do. He said, I ain't going to do it. I said, why? He says, because when you get there, when you get to wherever God's going to send you, you got to be able to say, God, you sent me here. You got to be able to say, God, you put me here. Now you have to take care of me. And you have to believe that he's going to do it. Just ask a sign. God wants to show you. God himself wants to show you a sign. He said, ask God, go where God wants you to go, and then hold God to take care of that. I'm so glad he shared that with me. Because next month, we got here in 2013. That'll be nine years we've been here. Ain't God good? He's taking care of us. And we're growing as a congregation. Prayerfully, we're growing in our spiritual walk. How about you this morning? When was the last time you asked a sign of God? I'm talking about in faith, asking him to show you who he is. Show you his power. Show you his might show you his mercy as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Because all of us have been through something. All of us have been hurt. We've suffered loss. We've prayed and asked God and he's delivered us through something. And that same God is here this morning. He knows what you've endured. He knows what you're going through even right now. He knows your doubts. He knows your question. He said, ask a sign. Put me to the test. In Malachi, he said, will a man rob God? 
He said, but you've robbed me. You robbed me in your tithe and in your offerings. He said, but try me. Try me and see if I can't bless you. He said, but when you rob God, when you don't trust God, when you don't ask of God, God begins to fill your pockets with holes. And everything you get, it just seems to fall right away. Everything that you think that you, you want, that you get it, and it just doesn't satisfy. Why? Because you haven't asked of God. What do you have need of this morning? He's here. Come on, come on. It's altar time. Come on, it's time. Get up out of your seat. Come up here and have a little talk with Jesus. It doesn't matter. I, I'm already saved. That's okay. Get up and come and have a little talk. He's here this morning. God bless you as you pray. Everybody find a place to pray. I'm telling you, come to the altar. There's power when you come. God bless you.
we're nothing without you. But by your grace, Father, great things are accomplished. You know, it's so good to be in the house of God. It's so good to have men and women that just come and surrender. That's what these altars are for. There's a song we used to sing. That's what this altar is for. To come and, and meet with God. The, the God that's able to heal. The God that's able to restore. The God that's able to meet every need in your life. It's according to your faith. And I'm so glad that I know him. I know him as my Lord and my Savior. And if you don't know him, what are you waiting for? If you haven't accepted him, he's still available. Just because the service is over, just because uh, 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 we've said our amens and we've hugged and said goodbye, you could still, in your car, in your home, in your bedroom, on your knees, I don't care wherever you are, look up and say, Lord, I need you. I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I need him to come into my heart and bring this peace. We'll get ready to do communion. Reverend Tissy will come help. Ross, help me. We're going to pass out communion cups. Jesus taught about communion. He's going to pass them out. In Luke chapter 22, he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them saying, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he offered a cup after sup, saying, after supper saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood which is shed for you. The Lord suffered is a sign, a memorial of Christ already come, who by dying delivered us. And his death in this special matter set before us, which we are reminded of. The breaking of Christ's body as a sacrifice is us, for us. It's brought to our remembrance, and it's something that we take deep appreciation for. Nothing can be more nourishing or satisfying to the soul than the doctrine of making, accepting the atonement for sin that Christ did for us. The assurance of the interest of this atonement. Don't you know the benefits of being set free from sin? Therefore, when we do this, we do it in remembrance of the sacrifice, of the cost that it cost Jesus. And the blood, that precious blood was shed. He said, for there is no remission of sin without the blood. The Apostle Paul, he taught us that when we do this, we have to make sure that we search our minds and our hearts, that we're pure in our thoughts, we're ready to receive this. It's not something to be done lightly. It's something that we do prayerfully. So I want you to search your heart even right now. Just take a moment and just begin to pray. God, search my heart. Lord, if there be any wickedness in me, God, if there be any darkness, any unrepented sins, help me, Lord God. Lord, I want to repent. I want to be cleansed. I want to be right. I want to be ready to receive this communion. Lord, search my heart. Father, wash me again, Lord. Purge me of any darkness. Purge my mind, Lord, that I might be ready. Lord, I love you. I don't want to bring damnation upon me. When he had given thanks, 
He broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You break it and eat it. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do ye do this, mm, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Lord, for this opportunity to partake Grateful, Lord, for the word that was ministered to get. Grateful, Father, for every soul that you brought to your house, O oh God. Lord, we're grateful for your promises. Help us each, O oh Lord, to seek you, Lord, to come to you, to ask a sign of you, O oh Lord. Lord, to have that blessed assurance of who you are and whose we are. That we belong to you and that you are our God. That you love us that you're here to meet our every need. Hide this message in our hearts. Help us to remember this communion in you, what you've done for us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. God bless you is our prayer. I pray the Lord God bless you this week. We'll have service this evening tonight at 630 Midweek service, Wednesday at 6.30, and Sunday, I mean, mm, Christmas Eve, candlelight service. Come. I've already bought candles. I want us to fill the house. We're going to sing Christmas carols. We're going to testify. We're going to sing happy birthday to King Jesus. God bless you as our prayer. Consider yourselves dismissed. Ruben, don't escape. I'm going to say something to you. Pretty please. I know they fast. Reverend Tessio, y'all didn't take the cups. Adam, help him take the cups, please.